Hi, my name is Giles Hindle. Welcome to this video, which is going to be about uh, Rich Pictures, uh, which is a, a tool that was developed um, by Peter Checkland and colleagues at Lancaster University. So, the context that I'm going to talk about Rich Pictures is in relation to uh, situation summaries, i.e., uh, when you're at the start of a project, uh, any kind of project, whether that's um, a problem solving type project or an analytics project or a strategy making project, uh, we need to start by understanding uh, the situation that we're facing. So at the start of any kind of project, we need to explore the situation we're facing. And this is because all situations are unique. Um, in terms of things like the history of the situation, the people involved in the situation, the processes um, within the situation that we might be interested in, um, the issues which are being faced by the people in that situation. So um, it's really, really important that we recognise that uniqueness at the start of any project that we do. And a great way to start your project is by drawing what's called a rich picture. And you can do that individually, um, away from the, the project team or, and the client organization, or you can do it in groups with stakeholders from the situation or, or within your uh, project team. At the end of the picturing process, the key thing is to uh, make a list of issues uh, which are contained in that situation. Now, there's, there's always going to be more issues in a situation than you can deal with, but it's a really good idea at the start of a project to document those issues because um, at the beginning of the project, we don't want to make any assumptions about which issues we're going to deal with, and sometimes the issues that arise are, are not what you expect, and so you need to uh, reflect on that, but we want to document them as part of the project. So... Rich pictures, they can be done individually or in groups. I would say up to four people uh, would be a maximum. I'm sure you can you, you can do it with more people than that, but I, I find that four people is, is about right. Um, they can take between 10 minutes and four hours. Uh, I think my record is four and a half hours, which I can assure you is, is way too long to, to be picturing, and I was certainly way past my best. Um, I think personally, I, I tend to, to take between one hour and two hours. That, that seems to be about my average, but I have spent, as I say, up to four and a half hours. They can be fun uh, and they allow everyone's views to be expressed, you know, whatever those views are. Uh, and certainly when, when I do this with groups of people in a workshop, uh, there's, there's certainly lots of laughing and joking. Uh, people tend to be a little bit sort of embarrassed about their drawing skills and, and this leads to, to quite a lot of laughter. So it, it's, it's a, a light-hearted um, type of workshop, you know, people tend to relax into it and, and have some fun and I think that's helpful in, in, in these types of projects. So the objective is to let people express their views, uh, to try and appreciate the different uh, frames of reference between the people uh, we're trying to get people to step back from the situation because, you know, most people are, are very, very engaged in in the day-to-day -day of the situations that they face. And when you can get them just to step back and look at the big picture, uh, it can be really, really useful to them. We try and make sure that all aspects of the situation are represented. So we're trying to capture the feel of the situation holistically. Uh, now, obviously, situations are complex. You know, even small organisations face complex situations. So, um, you know, we, we're not trying to capture everything, but but we do want to try and capture the situation holistically as best we can. Now, pictures are individual uh, to the person who who draws it. Uh, there are no right or wrong pictures. Um, the main thing to recognise is that it's the process of drawing the picture that, that is where the benefit is. The actual picture itself at the end of the process is not actually that important. Um, you know, we take a picture of it uh, to document it and, and we use the picture as a way of reminding us 
of, of our view of the situation, but it's the drawing of the picture which is the key thing. So there's a few underlying assumptions or principles that are important here. So the first thing to remember is that uh, we all have unique frames of reference. So we all see situations differently. We're all going to have different values. And so what, what's important for us in a situation is going to be different between different people. So we need to remember that, that our frames of reference determine what we see and also how we go about solving problems. We, know, we also need to recognize that our frames will restrict our ideas for innovation. And sometimes it can be very useful to see that. Uh, you know, if you're picturing with other people, that can be very useful for them to point that out. Um, and you know, research shows that, that we need a way of surfacing these various uh, frames of reference. We need tools. Uh, if we just rely on people sat sitting around a meeting table discussing, sometimes these views don't get properly surfaced uh, and we don't actually recognize the subjectivity within our own frame of reference. Okay, so you're not alone if you find it difficult to examine your own frame. It's actually quite difficult and these tools really help us do that. The second principle I want to, to highlight is that uh, it's really important at the start of projects and especially strategy projects that we don't make assumptions about what the problems are and that we don't get straight into decision making you know straight away at the beginning of the project so what often happens when you get people in a room in a workshop is that uh, the project teams you know that they, they will come in you know with an understanding of the situation and they will have already probably develop some options that they think are available to the project team and they'll often say Giles you know can, can we just get straight into making decisions we know what the problem is we know what the situation is let's let's get straight into making decisions and and they'll want to to, to sidestep the, the, this picturing and problem structuring process and it's really important that we resist that because what we find and, and the research is very clear is that if we can resist assuming that we know what the problem is and actually spend time problem structuring, most people will find that their view of the situation will change and their assumptions about what the problems were will change. And so therefore it can be incredibly important to the project to take that time to make sure that we're looking at the right problem. And the third um, principle is that when we do step back and, and look at a, a situation holistically, and it's quite rare that people do do that in their day-to-day -day work, they're often really, really focused on, on the things that they have to do. When you actually make them step back and look at the big picture, they can actually start to see patterns in the big picture, which they wouldn't have seen if they hadn't spent that time. And, and, and a, this is where a tool like Rich Picturing is really, really useful in helping people to to create that that big picture view so here's a picture of a group of managers this was a group of four managers in, in a large local authority organization um, you can see I would say this is a pretty ideal scenario we've got a nice big whiteboard there uh, and we've got a flip chart at the side of it where they can write their issues as they identify them um, what we can see is that all, all of the managers have a pen and they're all engaged in drawing that picture. So uh, this was a very successful session with a senior team. Um, they felt that they would captured uh, the situation effectively and they felt that they, they developed a really good understanding of what the key issues were for them uh, in their organization. Now that is the actual picture that they drew. And, and that is as good as it gets. Okay, so you need to uh, accept that these pictures, um, the original pictures that are drawn on the whiteboards, will be a bit scruffy. You know, they're, they're not works of art by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but that is a really, really good, comprehensive picture of their situation. So that's the sort of thing that you're aiming towards. Now, when you look in the literature, you'll see much tidier rich pictures. So this is one that I drew uh, for a project I was doing for the Department of Transport. 
and obviously you can see this is much tidier. Well, this that's because this is not the original picture. This is a picture that I drew uh, after the original picture uh, because I wanted to include a picture in the final report. So here's some more examples of, of rich pictures that, that you'll find. I mean, if you put rich pictures in Google, you'll find all sorts of pictures. Um, here's a, a very tidy one done by one of my students. Here's another sort of colourful one done by one of my students. I mean, it's really, really important to recognise that there are no right or wrong here. Everyone's going to have a certain style. Uh, you may even get some spectacularly scruffy and badly drawn pictures. It doesn't matter as long as the people feel that they've been able to step back, look at the big picture, get a sense of the holistic view and have identified issues, then it's been a successful session. Now, if you are going to be doing it in groups, um, so if you've got more than four people uh, in the workshop, then you're going to have to split people up into groups. And then what's going to have to happen is uh, it's very, very difficult to interpret somebody else's picture. So if you're splitting a, a group up into groups of four, then each of those groups are going to need to present their picture to the other people uh, in the workshop. So here we've got uh, a workshop uh, where we had four groups of, actually we had more than four groups, there was probably five or six groups here, and so we had each one of those groups needed to, to present their rich pictures to, to the other groups. And, and it, it's often quite a light-hearted, quite fun um, process, and you can see here that... that the people are enjoying themselves and obviously uh, that that can be quite useful to keep it light-hearted it's not always light-hearted you know we have had groups in tears you know looking at the, the situations that they're facing because they, they were very uh, very serious uh, but uh, often my experience is that generally these things are fairly light-hearted and fun now, we can also mix rich picturing with other tools. So this was a project that we did with a large UK charity. And in this particular workshop, we did some rich pictures, as you can see there on the whiteboards. But we also did some causal mapping, which is a more text-based uh, method um, where you, you actually capture issues textually and then structure them into clusters of issues. Um, and I think that, that can be a nice idea because some people will prefer text-based method, methods and some people prefer more picturing-based methods. So if you, if you use both approaches, then you've got more of a chance of everybody being satisfied. Now, you can do rich pictures on flip charts, but you can see here that it's not ideal because in this group of four people, so this was a, a group from a, a general practice, um, you can see that what often happens is that you get one scribe and then the other people sit, sitting and watching. Now that's okay and it's, it's not a failure of, of the process but it's better if everybody can get involved and so that, that's more likely to happen if you have a bigger sheet of paper. So I prefer to use whiteboards or I'll stick paper on the wall to create more space. So here's an example of a group who are picturing onto paper which has been stuck onto a wall to give them a bit more space. Uh, in this particular exercise, they're actually picturing the future rather than picturing the now. So normally we start out picturing the now and the issues facing the organization right now, but you can also picture the future and, and that can be useful when you start thinking about scenarios and things like that. Now, one of the, the, the common uh, uses of rich pictures for me personally is in the, the beginning of projects when I'm interviewing clients about what they want from the project. And so in the past, you know, I must have done many, many, many client meetings where I sit there listening to clients tell me about their situation and their problems. And it's very frustrating because that they're giving you lots and lots of information, but you can't write it all down. And, and I'm always sat there thinking, oh no, I'm just gonna forget all this information. So now what I do is I'll sit the client down in front of a large whiteboard and I'll draw a rich picture of their situation. Um, 
and then they can also participate in the picture if they want to. And it's also a very nice way of, of sort of introducing the tool to the client because what often happens is at the end of this session, the client will say, oh, Giles, you know, that, that was a really, really great session. Wow, what a super tool. And I'll say, well, yeah, well, we can do this with some of the stakeholders from your organization, if you like. And that, that's a great way of, of showing the client the value of this type of tool. Now, at the end of the rich picturing session, and it's absolutely vital that you create a list of issues. Now, people will resist this because they'll always say, look, we don't really need to, to, to write down a list of issues because we know what the issues are. We can see them on the picture. But the thing is, if you're responsible for facilitating this session, then you will not be able to interpret their picture. So you might take a photograph of their picture, but you won't know what it means. So it's absolutely vital um, for the documentation of the rich picture session that they write a textual list of issues. Also, it's remarkable how quickly people can forget uh, what happened in a workshop. So you can have a fantastic rich picturing session where people, you know, really, really get engaged with the tool and really identify lots of really important issues. But then a week later, you know, the world has moved on and, and they, they, they can't remember exactly what went on. So it is really important that we document these sessions. So you need to finish with a list of issues. Remember, we're not trying to be objective here. You know, if somebody thinks something is an issue, then, then it's recorded as an issue because we want to respect everybody's point of view. You know, this is qualitative data that we're capturing here. Uh, issues are aspects of a situation which people feel are significant. So that could be positive or negative. It's not all about sort of spotting the negatives. It might be about spotting strengths of the organization or key resources that we think are really important. Now, as I said, in practice, this, this bit can feel a bit redundant because people think you know, they don't really need to do it. But it, it's absolutely vital that you insist that people spend time on their list of issues. And if you're facilitating, it's vital that you look at that list of issues and make sure that you can interpret it because you are going to have to document that session. Um, and, and obviously, you need to know what people are saying. So, in summary... The key features of rich picturing. Well, in terms of application areas, um, I tend to use it for interviewing clients at the start of a project. Uh, I find that very effective. Um, you can use it uh, as a way of understanding a situation. Okay, so you can do that individually on your own, or you can do it in a in, in your project team away from the client. So you can do it privately away from the client organization and that can be very useful just as a way of trying to tune in because you know one of the key features of consultancy is being able to understand uh, new unique situations that you find yourself in quickly and, and getting up to speed as quickly as possible finally you can use it with stakeholders picturing in groups as a way of capturing qualitative uh, information you know getting people to talk to each other, uh, you know, surfacing issues and trying to sort of set off in, in a very open-minded way so that we can really focus in on where the real problems are. In terms of key benefits, it creates an effective summary of a complex situation. So that's empowering. You know, all of us, you know, in all of the, the problem solving and strategy work that we do, face complex situations and, and, and that's you know you know difficult and, and, and it can be uh, it can make us feel uh, frustrated and, and anxious when we can't understand what's going on. So this is a very empowering tool. People tend to come out of a rich picture session feeling empowered. It helps us explore what we think about things. So it helps with our sense making. You know the reality is that we you know we, we don't go around knowing what we think about everything. Uh, so when we draw a picture, it helps us to explore the situation and explore what we think. Uh, 
And so it helps us to make sense of, of the situation we're facing. It facilitates communication between stakeholders. So, you know, one of the problems with, with uh, problem solving in a meeting type scenario is that people tend to be quite argumentative in meetings. So people tend to, to you know, enter the meeting with, with a particular position and then they tend to defend that position in argument. Whereas with picturing, what we find is that people tend to open up more, uh, they tend to listen a bit more, and they're more likely to, to change their mind. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we, we picture the here and now rather than talking about the future or solving problems straight away because we want people to be able to go away from the workshop and potentially change their mind with that, without that actually happening in the workshop. And it creates a baseline for further work without significant facilitation. So, you know, this is a great way of creating a baseline for a project. And, it, you know, as a facilitator, I, you know, I use a lot of different tools. And as, as tools go, this is, a, this is a very easy facilitation tool. Because once you set people off picturing, you can let them do it on their own. Um, and as long as everybody's engaged... And as long as everybody's, uh, you know, talking and, and, and participating, then you don't need to do anything. And, and that's that's a really great thing. When if you've got sort of four or five groups of people around a workshop, you can just let them get on with it. And you can just, um, yeah, that, that, that's a very sort of uh, straightforward way of facilitating. Now, of course, there are weaknesses like there are with any tool. You know, some people prefer text-based tools. So... Some people just don't like picturing particularly, or it doesn't seem to fit with the way they like to think conceptually about things. Um, we'd like to do some more research on that, actually, but we, we don't fully understand that. But it's definitely true. Uh, I've certainly worked with people in the past who, who prefer the more text-oriented tools like causal mapping. Um, the picture cannot be easily interpreted by other people afterwards. So you need to remember that that picturing will be effective in terms of helping people structure, helping people make sense, helping people coordinate and communicate. But the actual picture itself is not going to be easily interpreted. So it's not going to be uh, you know, a finished tool which could then be used as a way of communicating qualitative data. So you need to be aware of that. You know, we, we do like to put uh, pictures in reports and sometimes people do draw pictures which, which which can be used as a way of communicating but in general that's not what you end up with with this type of tool in this type of workshop so you need to make sure that you collect textual data on the issues and as with all types of workshops you need to remember that some data could be being withheld so of course, in any situation, there's a political dimension. Uh, people may not always want to publicly state uh, some of the things which they think are issues. So you need to bear in mind that um, you know we require a certain type of collaborative atmosphere for these types of tools to work. And it certainly has happened to me a few times when a client has said, well, you know, that was great. That was a great uh, session, Giles, but I don't think everybody said everything that they were thinking because uh, they didn't want to be the ones to put it on the picture. But that's that that's a common problem with all types of workshops where you're asking for qualitative data. And, and that's why it's always a good idea to to collect qualitative data in other ways as well, which are more private, where people can express their views without it being identified. OK, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, that's a quick summary of Rich Pictures. If you'd like to know more about Rich Pictures, I would have a look at the work of Peter Checkland. He's written a few books. Um, and thanks a lot.